Before we get into today's video, I would like to thank all of my lovely channel members and especially my lovely darling stewards. Bella Mare, Husky HD, Hopeful, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. Thank you for your support and also a huge thank you for all of my darling mates for your continued support. Now I hope you enjoy the video and please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you. Kevin, on duty engineer of the Pizza Plex and Brian, leader of the day shift security guards, were sitting together in parts and services. Inside the protective dome like two animatronics, already in standby, ready for conscious transfer into the service systems of the Pizzaplex for an event called Boyfriend Time. It happened about a year ago when upper management noticed that the healthcare animatronic nurse Bendy and the daycare attendant spent quite a lot of time together. This was due to their personalities being uniquely compatible. This had reached the point of affecting the animatronic's moods. The daycare attendant, including a secondary moon mode, became much more docile after an interaction with Nurse Bendy. And Nurse Bendy? Well, she was a newer model animatronic. Her work wasn't affected at all. But it was still considered a free win that the old and twitchy daycare attendant just flat out worked better without any extra expenditure on Fazbear's side. In fact, with Nurse Bendy present, Moon could officially be reintroduced to the daily routine of the Pizzaplex, something which was assumed to never be happening anytime soon. And that's when Kevin had the idea to dedicate minimal amounts of server power during the nights, when most of the servers weren't really used anyways, to create a small virtual simulation where the daycare attendant and nurse Bendy could spend the night together, isolated in the simulation specifically as a reward for good behavior. Due to the customizability of Nurse Bendy, this of course was a no-brainer for the nurse animatronic, but the daycare attendant... This was a whole new level of care and functionality. And it had reached a point that Fast was considering the creation of more virtual worlds for the machines to explore. Meaning all machines. They just didn't understand that this was only working because Nurse Bendy and the daycare attendant were in love. Well, that's how humans would understand it, at least. Explaining that the points algorithm for friendship values as well as personality compatibility was quite high between Bendy and the attendant would require way too much time to explain. So why were Brian and Kevin now sitting in parts and services together? What should have been a simple boyfriend time procedure was slowed down by the fact that Sun had been misbehaving this week, while Moon had been on his best behavior. The problem was that usually it was either Sun or both machines who went into the server. This would in fact be the very first time boyfriend time was without Sun. There were multiple virtual worlds that catered to both Sun and Moon, and Sun alone, but no world specifically designed for Moon's needs when he was on good behavior. He just had been a more troublesome machine for so long, no one had expected this outcome. And it were these special one-on-one -on -one worlds that made Sun and Moon act so nicely. If Moon were to be sent to a regular three-person date world, he almost definitely start being a little more rebellious again due to him not getting the same special treatment as Sun. So a last minute sit down was necessary. Why are we here again? asked Brian bored out of his mind. For an idea, Brian, mumbled Kevin. Uh, do I get over to him for this? Kevin blinked. I'm only allowed to disclose that after you leave, to encourage you working as quickly as you can. Brian growled. There was the option to turn one of the virtual worlds into night, but that was too obvious. Moon would flip. Wait. Oh my god, why didn't he think of that f first? 
It was so obvious. He smiled. And then Brian reached into his breast pocket, his expression having changed to pure smugness. Huh? You have an idea? Finally. Uh, yep, I got one. Out of a little bag, he pulled some of his greens before putting them into a template cigarette. <sighs> before you light that, can you tell me at least Jesus? Brian raised a hand, then licked over the paper to finish rolling his joint. Putting the thing in his mouth, he stretched, before taking out his lighter. But just as he was about to flick it on, Kevin quickly grabbed it. Hey man, you know that's not cool, right? Tell me your idea before your reward, okay? Fine, Dad. Brian cleared his throat. <clears> throat> Turn one of Sun's world tonight. You know, Moon never saw them, right? Kevin blinked and looked down at his hands on the table. Wordlessly, he gave Brian his lighter. The solution was so obvious he was genuinely upset he didn't realize it himself. You get your overtime, mumbled Kevin. Fuck yeah, grunted Brian as he blew some of the smoke up into the air. After a long week of working at the pizza plex, filling your virtual lungs with air was such a wonderful feeling. Truly, breathing was one of the things you appreciated about humans. The functionality, the necessity, it was truly marvelous. Of course, you knew this was just a parameter you were programmed with to make you work better and faster, but... You also weren't programmed to not find any more problem with that. They were lying on the ground, though it felt a little strange, yet familiar. It was as if your hand was touching glass. That was thinly covered with water, though the liquid didn't stick to your skin or the clothes you were wearing. Such non-Euclidean water was common in the virtual worlds, so by now you were used to it. You inhaled the sweet, cool air of the world. It had a slight hint of roses. Calming made you smile. But the best thing about it was the mild twilight of it. Your eyelids weren't tinted orange from the sun, but instead were deep vermilion, almost brown, due to the lack of light. Tell a sign that this wasn't the usual boyfriend time. Of course, you knew that son was misbehaving. He had been impatient because you we were busy in the Western Arcade this Wednesday. As a healthcare animatronic, you could spend your time however you wanted as long as there was no emergency, and son tended to forget that. He was just very attention heavy. You slowly opened your eyes and were met with a sea of stars. Of course, you knew to keep the virtual worlds at minimum server capacity that this was just some JPEG with a twinkling star filter on top of it, but to your animatronic brain, seeing the stars shining with the colorful nebulas was mind-bendingly beautiful to you. And the fact humans got to experience this every day. Or at least, how you understood the world was making you incredibly jealous. But as you sat up and looked around, you soon realized that this was in fact a familiar world. You had been here multiple times before. The world was called Sea of Clouds. A beautiful world indeed. Excited, to see the lit-up skylines of cities, you rolled on your stomach, ready to see the ground, but you saw nothing but blue. Ah, oh, what a bummer. You didn't know why the ground was just blue, but in the real world, Kevin had just lowered the light value of the world and replaced the skybox with a different image. As such, 
It would have been jarring to see a landscape with a few scattered houses at day when the rest was supposed to be night. But it still had a certain flair to it, didn't it? In your mind, it just made it look like you were even higher up in the sky than the usual Sea of Clouds virtual world. Slowly you stood up. The ground of this world was truly like glass, with a thin film of water on top of it, rippling with every movement. It wasn't slippery, thankfully. Clouds were rendered in the distance, Due to the night, they were no longer fluffy and white, but now were mysterious, dark blue mist. You looked down at yourself. As per usual, your nurse uniform was gone. Instead, you wore a white summer dress. A quick pull at your collar revealed that you were nothing beneath it. Your feet were naked too, allowing you to feel the wetness between your toes. It was... Pleasant, especially considering in the real world your feet were, practically speaking, Roombas, so you slid around like on skates all day. Folding your hands behind your back, you began skipping across the virtual world sky. You wondered where Moon was. Usually you spawned into the world relatively close to your boyfriends. Moon? You shouted, almost concerned. Where was he? Or was he not uploaded yet? But it wasn't long as you kept going, when suddenly from behind a pair of hands placed themselves over your eyes. Your virtual heart made a surprised extra pump. Guess who? Whispered a devious quiet voice right into your ear. There wasn't really a point in playing this game. There was zero chance someone other than Moon could be here. But you humored him. Hmm. A surprisingly needy little gremlin. Moon didn't react with words, but you could feel his hands. They shook slightly. He was offended. Oh, how cute. Well, I, I, I guess you aren't 100% wrong. He still didn't let go of your face. You could practically hear him scowl. Does the gremlin have a name, perhaps? <laughs> You're really trying to be nice, Moon, aren't you? He sighed, finally letting go. And so you turn to face him. Hands folded behind your back, you cheekily lean to the side. Moon's human body seemed lanky while he was wearing clothes, but in reality he was quite toned. He had short grey hair and beautiful rose-coloured eyes. He looked a bit like an overly edgy anime character, but with human proportions. And he was equally lightly dressed like you. With his only clothing article being short, thin blue sweatpants. I'm just glad I found you, he said. This place is quite vast. The worlds are bigger the less needs to be rendered. Moon shrugged. I... I know. Um... By the way... Uh, you look stunning, Nurse Mendy. You smiled at him. Stepping forward, you took his hands in yours. You too, Moon. He blushed, looking down your hands, his thumbs carefully caressing your skin. I'm glad I get to finally be alone with you, Nurse Bendy. Oh, really? He nodded. Normally, sun is annoying. I feel like it takes too much of your time in the world. I also feel like, you know, our time together is always so limited. I only have nap time and you need to be present in the daycare when it happens and otherwise I can't see you. 
Also, you often have to leave for emergencies. It just would be nice to sometimes talk to you without anyone being present. <laughs> you didn't realize he was capable of higher thought, such as longing. Ah. Oh. Better reward him. You pulled him closer, embracing him. In that case, cherish it. His hands desperately grasped your back, face buried into your shoulder. As he breathed through his nose, taking in your scent, warmth and love, you hushed. Moon. Yes, it's Bendy. You pulled away from him, looking into his eyes. He smiled, and his blush got more intense. And then you kissed him beneath the moonlight. Gently, your lips touched. You could feel his heat and heartbeat as he squeezed tightly against you. The tips of his fingers crooked, trying to find more purchase. In this moment he wanted to feel all of you. Your softness, your warmth. Your hearts were pounding. Emotions neither of you were programmed Four flooded your brains. You wanted him. He wanted you. His tongue slowly advanced forward. And you allowed him passage. Passionately, they brushed against each other. Tasting him. Feeling him. And then, your hands reached into his pants... He shivered at your devious yet gentle touch. And for a moment you pulled away. His head was spinning. He was in heaven. He enjoyed this so much. And that's when you got on your knees. Your hands reaching for the knot, holding his pants in place. And you purred. Let me show you something I learned from the internet. You said with a cheeky undertone. 